So this is my usual lunch when I'm at work in the office. Tapawing my meal generates this much waste. And if I do this every day for a week, this is the amount of plastic I accumulate. According to some statistics, about 25 plastic bags are used in Singapore every second. And this is only our plastic usage. How about using aircon excessively? Or wasting our food due to over-ordering? Or even taking cabs to work when we wake up late? All of these actions contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. And as we all know, greenhouse gases or carbon emissions are the main cause of climate change. But are Singaporeans familiar with the impact of climate change on the world? Well, it will make uh, the world hotter. It will definitely uh, make the ice melted, right? So that's the reason why we have a lot of natural disaster. The ice caps melting and the polar bears dying. Uh, global warming, acid rain. The one who's going to be most affected is those countries uh, that have a lot of uh, ice right around them and also those countries that are very, very near to the beach yeah, or the sea. Globally, extreme weather events, including heat waves, more intense rainfall and droughts, will also become more frequent due to climate change. And these extreme weather events are already happening around the world today. After the series of devastating floods have led to just over 1,200 deaths. There are downright apocalyptic images coming out of Australia right now as the country's battling hundreds of fires. The record rainfall has killed at least eight people in and around the South Korean capital, Seoul. How do you think Singapore specifically will be affected by climate change? Uh, obviously, we see level rise because some parts of uh, Singapore is like kind of exposed to the sea, right? I feel like maybe it is hotter now. We got a lot of foodies at home, but now I don't, I can't really wear them already. So please save the earth. Uh. I want to wear more foodies. No, save our world. Oh, wait, wait. Projections show that climate change caused by carbon emissions would lead to average temperatures in Singapore rising by 1.4 to 4.6 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. Days with peak temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius could happen as early as 2045. But it's not all bad news. To combat climate change, more than 80 countries worldwide, including Singapore, have pledged to achieve something called net zero by a targeted year. A net zero future. Net zero carbon emissions. Net zero. Net zero. Net zero. Wait, what exactly does net zero mean again? Well, I think, I think I heard about it, but I'm not very sure what it is. Like net zero what? Oh. oh. Is that like carbon neutral? No, more? I don't know. Oh, I never heard of this before. Is it like to make global warming like zero? <laughs> So net zero is essentially referring to the balance between emissions that are produced and emissions that are removed from the atmosphere. If you think about a bathtub where you have the plunger in, the water that's filling up, if you think about it as carbon dioxide emissions or greenhouse gas emissions, that's basically what's happening right now. We are emitting and emitting and the water level keeps going up. So what we need to do is to remove the plunger, right? And so the water goes away. Basically, we're trying to harness technologies that can help remove carbon dioxide or greenhouse gas emissions faster than what we're putting in the atmosphere right now. And real zero is practically impossible because uh, we need to eat and live and play and work. So therefore, net zero has to be a big policy push uh, for all governments because it shows our commitment to the Paris Agreement, it shows our commitment to the science to reduce and remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Singapore has committed to do our part to combat climate change. Last year, we pledged to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. This is an especially ambitious target because Singapore is small and densely populated, we don't have wind or hydroelectric power, and solar energy is also limited because it requires lots of land. Wow, net zero emissions by 2050. Sounds quite tough, right? Possible meh? To achieve this goal, Singapore will need to find innovative ways to accelerate our low carbon transition for our industries, the economy and our society. Singapore has four key thrusts to addressing climate change and achieving our net zero target. The first key thrust is to help businesses go green. The second thrust is that we need international cooperation. So because we are a very small country, Singapore has to think about cooperating with other countries if, let's say, we want to import renewable energy in order to alleviate some of the demand on our power sector. The third key thrust is investing in 
low carbon technologies. So the last key thrust pertains to you and I. So everybody has to play our part in helping Singapore achieve net zero. To make sure the earth doesn't suffer the worst possible impacts of climate change, Singapore can't work alone. Every country needs to do its part to drastically stop introducing new carbon emissions into the atmosphere. But achieving this isn't that straightforward. Getting to net zero needs to be a worldwide group project. The biggest challenge to getting countries on board to get to net zero, right, is you actually cannot really force countries to do so. There is a global pact called the Paris Agreement. All countries did come together to sign, but it doesn't strictly require countries to set a net zero target. It encourages countries to set a net zero target. But because the science is telling us that we have to, if it's not mandatory according to a global agreement, doesn't mean that we don't do it. We need all countries on board because everybody emits carbon dioxide, emits greenhouse gas. So if you don't cover all the countries, then it's not very effective. Okay, if countries are trying to do their part, what about us as individuals? Is there anything that we can do too? The common misperception among people is that I, uh, I'm just one person, I can't do very much. But actually everybody needs to play their part, we need all hands on deck. So it may be as small as refusing a plastic bag. Uh, you can also think about bringing a collapsible container or a container in your bag. You can eat less meat, you can take public transport instead of private transport. All the choices that you make on a day-to-day -day basis contribute towards helping Singapore decarbonize. And even if you make one small little change to your daily habits, that's very good already. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the notification bell.